When I reviewed the Eureka Mignon Oro single dose grinder recently, I checked the burr alignment and found that it was quite good out of the box. I made a quick minor adjustment and said that I'd probably refine it when I had time. And so I have. Here I've taken it from very good to perfectly parallel. The inked flats come out 100% clean for their entire surfaces, as you can see. There's a little ink between them, but there isn't a molecule of it anywhere on the flats. Let me show you how I do this. Oh. My. God. It's like a miracle. First, let's consider when you might wish to fool around with burr alignment and when you might want to replace your burrs. Basically, you align them only when your grinder is having trouble making very fine grit for espresso or Turkish coffee. Has this ever happened to you? You find the point where the burrs begin to touch, which some call soft lock and some call the zero point. You can hear or feel them touching, so you open the adjustment slightly, only to find that the coffee is too coarse for Turkish, or that dialing in for espresso is a fiddly nightmare. Your burrs are misaligned. Let me illustrate what's happening. Imagine that these two jar lids are flat burrs. If they're misaligned, that is, if they're not parallel, they'll touch at an angle. There will be contact on one side and a wide gap opposite. Big bits escape here, spoiling your Turkish grind and making espresso more difficult than usual. It's not as noticeable with coarser grinding. If you grind strictly for pour over, you might not even notice it. This problem does show up sometimes, even on new machines straight from the factory. Usually, it's due to a loose fastener holding the burr on its carrier. So if you're having this problem, check the burr attachment screws first. Back them off a quarter turn and snug them up again in two stages. And if you're new to this, please be careful. Steel screws will mangle aluminum threads if you over tighten them, so snug is the word I chose. Try to apply the same torque to each screw. Typically, there are three for each burr. Chances are, tightening will fix it. When it does, you'll find that the burr's zero or touch point has moved farther in the direction of fine grit, meaning that the range of adjustment for small particles is now broader. If that fails to fix it, you might need to make an adjustment. I've got a complete tutorial on how to check the alignment and how to fix it without any destructive interventions or permanent changes. I'm not going to repeat that here. Follow the link if you like. But what about making the burrs perfectly parallel as I've done here? How would you accomplish that? Well, first, the flats would have to be level. In other words, the burr would have to be square with itself. So I start with a lapping plate accurate to within 3 microns along its length. It's designed to flatten water stones that you can use to get your plain irons and chisels perfectly square. I use a figure eight motion to contact as much of the stone's surface as possible, and I turn the workpiece 90 degrees after a certain number of strokes, always completing the full four turns per cycle. Now, I don't want to remove any more metal than I need for leveling, so I start with 8,000 grit. As soon as the entire flat surface is polished, I stop. I don't want to change the burr's proportions at all. I only want to square it up with itself so that later I can square it up with the machine using shims. Of course, you can't do this with coated burrs. That's one reason why I'm not a fan of them in home use, where you're likely grinding 100 to 200 grams per day. Quality plain steel burrs are meant to stay sharp for around 500 kilos of coffee, or yes, half a million grams. Do you understand this number? Million, you understand this number? I understand this number. You'll grind that much coffee during seven to 15 years time. 
Let's call it a decade for most people. So the burrs will not be getting dull during the grinder's lifetime. Feel free to replace them if you accidentally grind a foreign object like a ball bearing or a rock. So now I've got some grinder bling going on here. Look at that sparkle. Of course, my purpose here is not cosmetic, but to make it possible to get a perfect alignment, which I'm demonstrating here chiefly as entertainment. You see, I might have perfectly level, perfectly parallel flats, but that is not a big deal for two reasons. First, I've done nothing to affect the surface quality or sharpness of the actual blades. It's not practical to polish or sharpen them, so these burrs, despite how they look, are no sharper than they were out of the box. They're simply easier for me to align. Second, while I can prove that the burrs are perfectly parallel at rest, I have no idea what's going on under a normal workload. Because they are adjustable, there has to be some lash in the adjustment mechanism and linkage. That means the burrs are going to chatter, at least a bit, under the load of chewing through coffee beans, especially the high-density, medium-roast ones that I tend to enjoy. So again, this is entertainment for coffee nerds. There is no need to align anything this precisely. If you have a problem with grid adjustment in the fine range, then, as I said, it's easy to fix. But going beyond fixed really doesn't take you anywhere special. Unless, like me, you enjoy this sort of project in itself. Well, that's about all I've got for today. Next time, I'll have a follow-up review of the Eureka Single Dose Grinder, a one-month update following our initial honeymoon, most of which she spent in the bathroom crying. I'll let you see how we're getting along these days. Then I'll do a piece on the fine points of V60 Brewing with a few tips and tricks that you will not have seen anywhere else. I'm also going to look at the mountain of available drippers and filter papers to see if any of them makes a noticeable difference. We have large openings and small ones, straight ridges and spiral ones, smooth sides and even horizontal ridges, along with far too many paper options. I might include the Kalita Wave in that video, or I might approach it separately. I haven't decided yet, but either way, you're going to learn something new. So keep in touch. Cheers!